Welcome back to Train Signal Citrix Zen App Training. You're watching the Introduction to Citrix Policies lesson. So far, we've been talking about the Delivery Services Console. We've navigated the Delivery Services Console. We talked about role based access. We talked about the configuration logging of the database. But we, every time we talk about settings and configuration of the farm, we say that all the settings have been moved into Citrix policies. So, from this moment moving on forward, what we're going to do is we're going to focus a lot on Citrix policies. And you'll notice that we have two full lessons focused on Citrix policies, but in reality, we have four lessons, if not more, that are focused on Citrix policies. This lesson and the next are going to focus on, this is a very general introduction to policies. We're going to talk about some of the basic concepts and so on and so forth. The next lesson is going to be a very deep dive, in-depth overview of policies. But then we have the printing lesson that's going to focus on the printing configuration settings that are also in group in Citrix policies, and we're going to have the security lesson that's going to also have a very big reliance on Citrix policies. So you notice how Citrix policies become a very central, a very focal point in the configuration of your Citrix farm. So what we're going to do in this lesson is we're first going to talk about how you create and edit Citrix policies. We're going to talk about work groups and the need to have a work group when you're creating a Citrix policy. We're going to talk about the different filtering policies. So you can apply policies against what? You can apply it against the ZenApp server, against the uh, user sessions that are incoming into ZenApp, etc. That's what filtering policies means. We're going to talk about the integration between Citrix policies and Active Directory policies and how you can leverage your Active Directory infrastructure from a group policy management console perspective and the fact that Citrix actually recommends that you use Active Directory policies to configure your Citrix policies. We're going to talk about how the policies are processed. You have Citrix policies, you have Active Directory policies, you have local policies. Which one gets processed first? Which one has precedence over the other? So on and so forth. And then the last thing we're going to talk about is prioritizing the policies. So if you have two policies that have the same settings, which policy is going to enforce its setting and based on what? So we're going to cover all of that in this lesson. So first things first, filtering policies. What do you, can you filter a policy against? So in essence, what are you applying this policy against? If it's a ZenApp server settings policy, that you can obviously only apply it against a work groups container or object because the work groups is built so it can contain ZenApp servers so it can group ZenApp servers of a similar type so you create a work group and then you can apply a policy against that work group if it's sessions if it's sessions that are incoming into a ZenApp server which is the user portion of the policies then you can apply it against user uh, one user or a user group you can apply it against client device name. You can apply it against the client IP address range. And you can apply it against an access control. So anything that's coming through access gateway, you can apply a policy against. This is all useful for from a granular perspective so that you can apply different policies to different set of circumstances. So if you have users in a different subnet and you're trying to limit their access or you're trying to enforce certain settings to them that you want you don't want to enforce to the users that are on the LAN, for example, you can apply these policies against that. Citrix policies and Active Directory policies. Again, I mentioned that Citrix actually recommends that you use Active Directory policies to configure Citrix policies. Now, when you install the Delivery Services Console, what it does is it immediately extends the functionality of the Group Policy Management Console to enable the GPMC to configure Citrix policies. And I'll show you that in the demonstration piece. So, why does Citrix recommend that you, you know, use or configure Citrix policies through Active Directory? Well, there's a number of reasons. So let's go through them again. Well, first of all, what makes the most sense is it's a single pane of glass, right? So it's easier to manage all of your policies, Citrix or non-Citrix, from the single pane of glass. So if you can do everything from the GPMC, why not? You know, that's a, you know, one, one less console for you to worry about, right? The other thing is, and it's very important to note, when you're integrating Citrix policies with Active Directory policies, no Active Directory schema extension is needed for the integration. As soon as you install the delivery or the delivery services console, it's going to integrate with the GPMC, extend its capabilities to manage Citrix policies as well. One of the other reasons is backup and restore. If you're managing everything, if you're creating and editing everything through the GPMC, that means your Citrix policies are being backed up through Active Directory. You can restore them the same process you would go about restoring Active Directory policies. If you're trying to migrate policies, maybe across domains because you're in the middle of a migration or your company just acquired or you just acquired another company, then again, you can migrate these policies as part of 
uh, the same process that you would with your Active Directory policies. You can also view the resultant set of policies for server, user, or session. This is going to dive into the second bullet point here, or the, the bullet one before last, which is to perform a scenario modeling. So I'm going to show you how if you have a lot of policies, group policy and Citrix and so on and so forth, and they have maybe overlapping settings, how do you determine which setting is being enforced if you're troubleshooting a particular issue and you, and you can't figure it out because of so many policies, you can actually run a scenario, run a model that will tell you, okay, based on what you're feeding me, this is the a resultant set of policies that are being applied for the server, for the user, for the session, etc., etc., which makes it easier for you to look at and say, okay, this policy is overriding the other policy. Why is it taking precedence? Is it has a lot, uh, higher priority? Why is that? And you can troubleshoot from there. Very, very handy tool. I think you'll enjoy watching it once we demo it um, on screen. And finally, if you're configuring your Citrix policies through Active Directory, then you assign the delegation through Active Directory with the same process. Again, makes it a little easier and you're following the same set of uh, steps. So a lot of different reasons why Citrix recommends that you integrate Citrix policies with Active Directory policies. Now, this is important because we talked about uh, a lot about how processing works, how precedence works, so on and so forth. So what I wanted to do here is make sure you understood that every Windows server has a local policy that gets applied to it first. So that's the first policy that gets processed. Once that's processed, you then have the Citrix policies that get processed. Then you have the site policies processed, and then you have the domain policies, and then you have the OU policies. And from a precedence perspective, obviously OU has the highest precedence over the servers then domain then site then citrix then local policies and we're going to take a look in in more depth when we do some of these modeling exercises how if you have an ou policy and a citrix policy and they have the same types of settings the ou policy will override the citrix policy so it's a very important here to understand how things work how things get processed and which policies have precedence over the others now, from a prioritization perspective, it's very important to know that if you have policies that contain the same configuration settings, the highest priority policy is the one that's going to enforce its settings. Now, when you're giving a priority to a policy, the lowest number is technically the highest priority. So the number one is the highest priority you can give to a policy, and everything after that becomes a lower priority. So that's very, very important to note. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the demo portion of this lesson and take a look at policies. So we're back on our uh, Zenapp server here, XA01, and we've opened the Delivery Services Console. We have the Policies node highlighted, and you'll notice that over here on the right, you have the tabs that we talked about. You have the Computer tab. This is for Computer Policies, and you have the User tab, which is going to be for any user-specific settings, sessions, incoming sessions connecting to your Zenapp servers. Now, before we go ahead and create a policy, what we want to do is we want to create a work group uh, add a server to that work group so that when we're creating a policy we can filter it against that particular work group so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna select it and then we're gonna right click and we're gonna click on create work group and you can call this work group whatever you want you can call it based on the region where the servers are located or you can configure it based on the type of application so if you're if you're grouping servers based on application which is what I'm gonna do here I'm gonna call this CRM servers and you can give it a name, maybe um, the Oracle CRM servers. If I could type. <laughs> so once uh, you give it a description, now you're going to have to add a particular or a group of Citrix servers into this work group. You'll notice there's several different ways by which you can filter these servers before you add them into a work group. Now, the easiest is to just select the farm servers here. Once you select farm servers, you can click on add. You'll see the farm servers. If they're inside folders, then they'll be organized by folders. You'll select the particular server that you want. You can click on OK. However, if you want it to be proactive, if you you know add servers and you want to maybe manage this through Active Directory, or you just want to make it a little easier for you to manage servers as you add new servers to the farm, what you could do is you can specify or you can configure a particular OU with an Active Directory so that whenever you drop a server inside of this OU, it automatically gets added to this work group and all of the policies that you've applied against the work group automatically take effect. So if you select 
organizational unit here and you click on add you'll notice it'll bring up um, your ability to find organizational units within Active Directory so you can browse find the OU that you want click on that OU and it will configure that particular OU to be part of the work group so that anytime you drop a server in there that server becomes part of the work group you take it out then it goes out of the work group very easy very easy to manage in some cases if you want to filter it based on server group rather than OU then you can have a particular group within Active Directory where you drop all of your Zenapp servers into that global group and you can figure that global group here anytime you're adding a server to that group same concept except instead of organizational unit you are managing it based on group so depending on your preference uh, you can configure one of those three options because we have a small environment here and for purposes of demonstration it's just easier for us to select uh, from the farm so I'm gonna go ahead and select that I'm gonna click on OK and voila, we just created the first worker group that we have, which is CRM servers. Now, if we focus our attention back up here on policies, what we're trying to create is a computer policy, which means we want to configure a policy that configures all the ZenApp server settings. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select computer up here in the tab, and you'll notice that by default you have an unfiltered policy. That is, This policy is going to exist uh, uh, that, that is filtered against all of the servers in your farm. You can't change the filter, you can't assign it a filter. This just exists kind of sort of like an umbrella for all of the servers. So any, any changes you make on this particular policy will automatically get applied to all of the Zenapp servers that are in your farm. So for that purpose, what we want to do first is we want to go ahead and create a new Citrix policy. So to do that, keep in mind, we are creating Citrix policies right now from within the Delivery Services Console. We haven't started talking about the Active Directory integration yet. So if I click on New, you are going to come up here and give a name to this policy. What do you want this policy to be? Again, for consistency reasons, we're going to just name this CRM Servers Policy and you can give it whatever description you want uh, you can let's just do Oracle CRM servers policy now these are the additional steps that we would have to do in order for us to complete the configuration of this policy the second step is settings we have to configure settings that are going to be part of this policy before we can apply it and then the filters is going to tell you okay what do you want to apply this particular policy against now because this is a computer policy that we're building how many filters can I apply this against come on I'm not going to say the Bueller thing. Uh, you guys are probably bored with that. So how many, uh, you know, what can I apply the filter against? If anyone said work groups, then you're absolutely correct. The only thing you can apply a computer policy against is work groups because that's the only computer objects that you have within your Citrix infrastructure per se. And then the final step is you can always create policies but not enable them. Um, but, you know, obviously if you're creating a policy and you want to enable it, then the last step would be to enable that particular policy. If I click on next here, for those of you that are familiar with um, Active Directory policies, this doesn't look exactly the same as what you have with, with Microsoft group policies, but it's very similar in terms of functionality. So you'll notice that if you want to add a particular setting, I'm going to show you how it's going to be very, very similar to what you're used to from a group policy perspective. So if we go to Auto Client, Reconnect here, and you want to select Enable um, Auto Client Reconnect, you can click on Add and you can either allow or prohibit auto client reconnect now what is auto client reconnect It's very simple if you have a session connected to a particular Zenapp server and for whatever reason you have a drop on the network some you know you have a glitch something forces the you know the loss of the network what do you want to do when the network comes back when you're able to connect again to the Zenapp server do you want that session that was broken to automatically reconnect the user to the server and and they can continue to work or do you not want to allow that type of functionality so if you're saying you want to allow that you're gonna click you know you're gonna obviously select allow every one of your settings gives you the ability to read up about it from a explanation perspective what does this policy do what does the setting do so you know if you want to enable it or disable it so if I click on OK here and by the way that explanation for the setting also exists down here so if you select a different setting it'll give you explanation on that particular setting again so if you've selected that you have the ability to obviously edit it remove it so on and so forth and you'll notice down here on uh, out here on the left you have different categories for settings you have licensing you have ICA etc etc for now we're just gonna uh, configure auto client reconnect we're gonna click on next 
And now you'll notice that I only have one set of filters, right? As we, we spoke about before, I can only apply a Zen app server settings or a computer policy against work groups. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add a particular work group. Now, the one thing I don't like here is, you know, why can't Citrix just show me the work groups that I have and I can double click on it? But for some reason, that doesn't show up. So what we're going to have to do is just type in CRM servers, which is the work group that we configured earlier on and you can feel free to put a comment in here if you wanted to we're going to click on OK automatically adds it it's enabled we're going to click on OK again and then we are going to click on next now the final step is hey do you want to enable this policy or do you want to disable it obviously if you uncheck this you will disable uh, that policy so when you're ready click on save it's going to go do its thing it's going to create it and bada bing bada boom you now have two policies here now here's the trick the policy that we just created has a lower policy than the policy that gets installed by default, which is uh, the unfiltered policy. Now, what happens when you have a lot of Citrix policies in place? How do you determine which setting in which policy, if there's a conflict, gets enforced? So if, if you have a lot of policies and you want to be able to figure out which is being enforced in order for to troubleshoot or in order for you to do some tweaks, there is a group policy or a Citrix policy modeling wizard that allows you to do that. Now, before we can um, run that modeling wizard, let's go ahead and create a circumstance where there's a conflict between settings. Now, when we created this, we you know configured a setting in there for the auto client reconnect. So let's go ahead and select unfiltered and click on edit. And let's go through next here. And let's also select the auto client. Let's click on add. And let's go ahead and prohibit auto client reconnect. We're going to click on save. All right. So at this point, we have two policies that have a conflicting setting. One policy has it allowed and the other's policy has it prohibit. Now, in this case, the unfiltered policy has a higher priority than our policy, but we don't want that. So I'm going to select my policy and I'm going to increase its priority. So you'll notice that now I have my our priority is one. So this, the policy we created has a higher priority. Now this is obviously very simple to to figure out here. There's only two policies, but imagine if you had ten or twenty policies here with conflicting settings because you have different administrators that have configured different policies. How do you figure out which setting is being enforced? So if you right click on the policies node here and you click the run the modeling wizard. You're going to get a wizard here that launches that allows you to input a set of criteria against which it's going to model the scenario and tell you which setting is going to be enforced. So I'm going to click on next first and we want to process this information or process the simulation against one of the Active Directory domain controllers in our domain. So I'm going to select it. We're going to click on next. Uh, yes, I have named my domain controller ctx-lico1 uh, ncom. That's local so this is our domain controller over here it's basically asking okay well which user or group um, are, are we selecting here so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select a uh, server that we can run this simulation against as well so I'm gonna browse and say we are going to run this against XA01 I click on OK I click on next this screen basically allows you to configure the, some of the network circumstances, some of, you know, are you, are you simulating against slow networks? What are you trying to do? Do you want loopback enabled or not? So these are all settings that you can configure in order to enhance the simulation, in order to give it more information based on the circumstance that you have in real life. For the purpose of my demonstration, I don't really care to tweak any of the conditions around uh, my network simulation from a network perspective. So I'm just going to leave all of these at default you can always change the site here if you have to from this particular site just in case you know the policy is being applied under a set of servers that are in a different site with an active directory for me I'm just gonna keep all of these at default we're gonna click on next you have the ability of selecting a different path with an Active Directory. Uh, for us, the organizational unit with this particular path is sufficient. So we're not going to change or we're not going to select another path with an Active Directory. And this is a little confusing here because um, it's saying, hey, what do you want me to um, run this model against? What type of filter? Now, this says server groups. Technically, it should say worker groups. So 
just so you don't know if it, if you haven't figured it out that server groups is technically your worker groups you can either uh, you can also uh, simulate against the client name a client IP address you can simulate against um, access gateway for those connections that are coming in through access gateway so I'm just gonna go ahead and select CRM servers here we're gonna click on next and it gives you a summary of what it's about to do from a scenario perspective what type of modeling it's about to run when you're comfortable with it you can just click on run And we are going to close in order to view uh, the report that it has generated. So you'll notice that, yes, it has detected that there are two conflicting settings within our uh, two policies that it, it should process. But because the CRM servers policy has the higher priority, then the CRM servers policy will enable auto client reconnect. Now you'll also notice here that it says Windows GPO slash Citrix policy, which means that it, the modeling wizard can model also against Active Directory policies, which is what we're going to take a look at next. So as I told you guys during the presentation portion of this lesson, when you install the Delivery Services Console, it automatically extends the features of the Microsoft Group Policy Management Console in order to allow it to manage Citrix policies. So the way to do that is you're going to click on Start, we're going to drag up here to administrative tools and then we're going to select group policy management console let's go ahead and extend it here and once you have the group policy management console open you'll the first thing you're going to notice is that you know it automatically expands it and we're on the default domain policy but what I want to draw your attention to is the Citrix group policy modeling this is the same wizard that you can run from within the group policy management console that you ran in the delivery services console and that gave you that report with the resulting sets of settings except when you're running it through group policy management console it has more visibility over some of the group policy settings itself so it gives you a more grand or more detailed reports that has the Citrix resulting policies but also has the group policy resulting policies. Now if we go ahead and right click on edit domain or right click the default domain policy and click on edit here, let's go ahead and expand that, you'll notice that under the uh, policies here I now have Citrix policies and once it shows up on the right you'll notice that it's a very familiar screen it's the same type of screen that you've been working with when you were configuring policies through the delivery services console so navigating that is very very easy is very very simple so what I wanted to do here is let's go ahead and follow the same process and let's go ahead and create a new policy and we're gonna call this the active directory CRM policy and let's just put AD for the description. Same things, uh, same process. We're going to just go over this real quick. And let's go ahead and select Auto Client Reconnect. And we're going to go ahead and prohibit that. We're going to click on OK. We're going to click on Next. Now, keep in mind, the last time we did this, we did this through the Delivery Services Console with the Citrix policy that we created for the CRM servers. And we enabled it. We allowed Auto Client Reconnect and we gave it a priority of one so we increased the priority of the Citrix policy over the default policy that was there which was the unfiltered policy so technically that should be the highest priority right now which is to allow the auto client reconnect so let's see what happens we're gonna click on next and we are going to apply this against our CRM servers so same process so far nothing has changed click on OK and we are going to click on next here we're gonna enable it and we're gonna click on save alright so we have created that what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna give it a priority that's higher than the unfiltered so we're gonna increase the priority here so my Active Directory CRM policy has a higher priority than the unfiltered policy you'll notice I can't see the policy that we've created through Delivery Services Console now what I want to do is I want to run the modeling wizard against what we have here to see what the resulting policies are going to look like right so let's go ahead and exit out of here let's go and right click here and run the Citrix group policy ma uh, modeling wizard I'm going to click on next and we're going to go through the same process that we went through earlier we're going to select the Zen app server that we want to run this against in our case it's going to be XA01 we're not going to touch the network we're going to keep this a default active directory paths are fine again we're going to run it against the CRM 
servers workgroup. And let's go ahead and run this report. Close. Now you'll notice it's much granular than what you have or what you saw when you ran the modeling wizard from the delivery services console and gave you all of these computer information that you have for the actual uh, domain uh, policy, the default domain policy that you didn't see in earlier policies when you ran it against just the Citrix policy within the delivery services console. Now the one thing to note here is that the auto client reconnect is set to disabled and the winning policy is the default domain policy which is our active directory crm policy now why is that well we did everything right right in the delivery services console let's go back to it real quick and let's go into information here let's go back up to our policies you'll see that our crm servers policy has a higher priority than unfiltered so what happened that would enable Active Directory CRM policy that we created in Active Directory to have a higher priority? Why? Anyone? So during the demonstration or during the presentation, I showed you the processing and the precedence, right? So we process from the bottom up. So again, local policies, local computer policies will process first. Then Citrix policies will process second. And then site, then domain, then OU. So what happened here? The local policy process, then the Citrix policy process. Now when it came time for the domain, which takes precedence over the Citrix policy, it noticed that there is a conflict between the domain specified setting and the Citrix policy specified setting. But because the domain policy takes precedence, the domain policy overrode the Citrix policy and applied enforce its own settings, which forced you to disable the setting. Okay, I hope this lesson was, was helpful. I hope there was enough information. Let's go ahead and switch back to our presentation now. So let's recap what we've learned in this lesson. We started off by talking about how you know we've been navigating the delivery services console, we've been creating the configuration logging, role-based access, so on and so forth, but we haven't really configured the farm yet, we haven't configured the servers yet, we haven't done any kind of configuration just yet. And the reason for that is all the configuration settings have been moved out of the delivery services console, out of those nodes in the delivery services console, and have all been put into Citrix policies, which brings us to this lesson, which is an introduction, uh, a walk through basically of where certain things are within Citrix policies. We started off by talking about how you create and edit the different Citrix policies. We talked about how you have to create a work group first so that you can apply a policy against that particular work group from a Zen app server settings perspective. We then moved on to talk about the different filtering policies. You can apply policies if there are Zen app server servers against work groups. If there are users and sessions that are connecting into Zen app, you can um, apply them against users and user groups, client IP addresses, access gateway, if they're coming into an access gateway, so on and so forth. We talked about the integration between Citrix policies and Active Directory policies. We talked about the Group Policy Management Console. What are the benefits of integrating Citrix policies and Active Directory policies? We talked about the fact that Citrix recommends that you configure your Citrix policies through Active Directory so you can use Active Directory delegation backup and restore. You can migrate your Citrix policies across domains together with the Active Directory policies. So there's a lot of benefits to using the integration piece of Citrix policies with Active Directory. We then talked about how policies get processed. We talked about the fact that there's a local policy on every server and then Citrix policies process on top of that and then you have your site policies, your domain policies, your, your OU policies and which one takes precedence. So we went through the diagram and I showed you that Processing happens from the bottom up, so the local policies get processed first, whereas precedence happens from the top down, which means the OU will always have precedence over all the other servers. We then talked about prioritizing policies. So in Citrix policies, you can have two policies that have the same settings. The, prior the highest priority policy is the one that's going to enforce its settings. And we also talked about the fact that the highest priority 
is based on numbers and it's the lowest numbers that are the highest priority so if you have a Citrix policy with a number one a priority level one that is the highest level of priority that you can give and everything else goes from there so two will be lower and three and four and so on and so forth I hope this lesson was informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing